Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I'd like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to change the pH of your potting soil. So this is a highly requested video. Now, I've done videos on uh, pH and garden soil. I haven't done any on how to change the pH of your potting or your garden soil. This is very, very difficult to do, but potting soil is very doable. And if you are a houseplant person, then you do want to watch this. I, I promise you, you want to watch this. Trust me, there's no other video on the internet for you other than this one that's going to tell you how to do this correctly and why you need to do this because trust me, you need to do this. I know none of you do. So, because I've never heard of anyone else doing it on the interwebs. So, anyways, but if you are a container gardener, if you're a houseplant person, if you're using any form of container or enclosed container for that matter, regardless of what you're using, peat moss, coconut coir, regular soil, sphagnum moss, I don't care, this video is for you. It is very important because pH ultimately is your determining factor as to whether or not your plant is getting any nutrients in any capacity macro or micronutrient. With that being said, what is the purpose of the pH for plants and why is it so important? And it ultimately comes down to availability of the nutrients within the soil system. So pH is, is this fancy little thing that is a, basically a way of calculating the number of hydrogen atoms within your soil. So it's a very fancy way of saying it, but there is a scale of zero to 14 and you can fall anywhere in between there. Plants like to fall between six and 7.5. We'll get into that just, you know, a little bit later, but ultimately that's where you wanna be for your nutrients to be the most bioavailable. So you may be asking, well, why would a lower pH or a higher pH affect this why does this matter and it comes down to again those hydrogen ions so say you have an abundance of hydrogen ions in your soil all of which have a positive one charge and you have a clay soil or a peat based soil that has a cation exchange capacity within it and that cation exchange capacity as always is negative and we've talked about this before so we have positively charged hydrogen ions we have a negatively charged potting soil and ultimately the hydrogen ions are occupying spots that nutrients could be occupying and therefore when we apply nutrients or nutrients is biodegraded within the system through microbes it is simply washed out or is volatilized out into the air because it has nowhere to go because our battery pack is full that said battery pack being the soil itself now conversely if we have a negative number of hydrogen ions, so we don't have enough hydrogen ions, then we have a very, very high negative charge within our soil. And so what ends up happening is when we apply fertilizer or when our microbes degrade our organic fertilizer, it can't be, it, it's stored too, too tight. And so it's bound up into the soil and the soil does not want to let it go. And therefore it's not bioavailable. It can't be solubilized in water because the soil's holding on to it much, much too tightly and therefore again our nutrient capability uh, for our plants uptake goes down so that's a really really kindergarten way of explaining ph but anyways you guys get the idea ultimately so that is what we're looking at we're changing the balance in hydrogen ions to make it so that when it's between a 6 and a 7.5 the right amounts of nutrients are available to the plant and the plant roots are like a straw. There's no real simple way to determine this. The roots don't actually take the nutrient and pluck it from a soil particle or from a, a, a peat moss particle. That's not how it works. It actually is suspended within the soil solution. So when there is water within our soil solution, it is dissolving those nutrients lightly pulling them away from that soil medium and bringing them over to the roots in which the roots then take that nutrients either through passive or active diffusion. I could do a whole video on those mechanisms unto themselves, but it's taking it from that soil solution, that water solution, and then bringing it into the root. And so that's ultimately how soil nutrients works. And therefore, when our pH is out of whack, we can't solubilize 
that nutrients into the water and of course there are exceptions to this in a kitchen and so forth or in some cases we solubilize too much which can happen in the event of say copper we solubilize too much into the water and now we're getting into the realm of toxic and when we end up in the realm of toxic we end up killing our plants so kind of cool very neat but let's talk about how to fix that because i'm sure you guys your eyes all rolled into the back of your head and you all felt like you were in grade 12 chemistry for the first time ever so we do have acid loving plants um, i'm not going to get into that too too much today but there are some that like it just uh, as low as 4.5 and again that has more so to do with the abundance of toxic normally toxic micronutrients and so when our ph gets into the lower ranges we end up with an overabundance of certain nutrients which for some plants is what they thrive in so for acidic soils uh, soils that are under seven these are the nutrients that are bioavailable nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur calcium and magnesium in acidic soils so soils that are under or below the number of seven the nutrients these nutrients slowly become more and more unavailable so the farther down the scale we get the farther away we get from uptake and so these can be nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium uh, magnesium magnesium and sulfur so those are the ones that become unavailable in acidic soils conversely in alkaline soils so soils above seven and higher we get up on the scale the more unavailable they become is iron, magnesium, boron, copper, and zinc. And then in strongly acidic soils, this is the ones where I was talking about um, the abundance becoming too, too high. And those are uh, those nutrients that become too abundant in acidic soils are aluminum, iron, manganese, which is not magnesium, it's manganese, Big difference there, I see that being mixed up all the time here on the YouTubes. Um, and again, that becomes acidic at two plants. So I did wanna insert that here so you guys have a little bit of a better idea. So the best way to determine how a soil becomes um, acidic, I guess you could say, and this is why it applies so much to container gardening, is because um, container gardening is susceptible to these changes because there's actually three main factors that will change the pH ultimately of a soil substrate or soilless substrate. And so that's why container gardeners um, or houseplant people are more susceptible to this. Conversely, the nice part about container gardening or houseplant people is that this is very easily reversible, whereas in an outdoor system, it's not as reversible because we are dealing with parent material we're dealing with ultimately for lack of a better term genetic issues with our soil so we're able to change these factors very easily in these container soils so the three factors that will cause acidic soil and things to keep in mind when you're trying to determine whether or not it's time to amend your potting soil or to make some changes to your potting soil it, it boils down to these so the first one being rainwater or just water in general especially those of you that uh, water with distilled water reverse osmosis water um rain water these types of water and this is going to be highly controversial but it comes down ultimately to the charge within the water system itself so they are notorious for leaching away certain ions and these ions are positively charged ions so this will affect the balance or the charge or the chemistry within the soil and when we change that chemistry we're changing the ability to hold or lose hydrogen ions and therefore we're ultimately changing the pH and these main ions that are leached are calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So we know this, I mean, I've talked about it in videos past. If you're noticing salt buildup or if you're bottom watering your plants then and you're using reverse osmosis or distilled water, you are flushing the system out and you're flushing out these relatively large molecules. I mean, we're talking about calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. These are 
large ions when compared to other ions in a periodic table. So these larger ions are very easily washed away and with them goes their charge. So for in the case of calcium, it's plus two. So there goes a, a positive two charge and therefore um, we have access for more hydrogen, actually two hydrogen atoms to move in, ions to move in to the place of where that calcium was because what's in water is H2O. So that's something to keep in mind and that is something that can ultimately change the pH of your soil. So if you're using uh, reverse osmosis distilled rainwater, there's no reason why you can't. It's very, very good water. It's very, very good for your plant. I mean, microbially, it's it, heads and tails better than chlorinated water, but it's something to keep in mind. It will ultimately affect your pH. The second factor is the carbon dioxide release from decomposition within your potting soil system. So if you are adding uh, manures or compost or you are using a soilless medium, meaning you're using organic soil, which would be peat moss, coconut coir, something that originated from a plant in any form, you will have decomposition over time. It's just it's just what happens. Soil, soil does not decompose. It's big rocks that have literally been pulverized into a pulp and made into little rocks. It's completely inorganic when we're talking about soil, soil. But when we're talking about peat moss or potting soil, that's completely alive. Um, and so therefore, it's going to decompose over time and it's going to acidify over time as CO2 is released and the decomposition process takes place. So your soil, uh, pH will decrease and peat moss and coconut coir naturally have a lower pH just right out of the bag and that again has to do a lot with what it's made from so right out of the bag you can amend um, your potting soil no problem and actually would work to your benefit hugely in in many cases and then this will happen both outdoors and indoors organic or inorganic uh, leca for example this will happen in Luchusapon, this will happen in, is the roots. So as the roots respire, the roots respire the same as the leaves do. They release like a weak, very weak acid. But ultimately, over time, that weak acid can acidify your soil. And it is same kind of composition as like a microbial organic degradation. And then lastly, we just have the natural process of decaying organic material causing nitric acid sulfuric acid i mean there's so many different ones again all acidic all decreasing that soil ph and then if you are using a conventional fertilizer you also have your um, oxidization of your ammonium uh, ammonium sulfate that sort of thing so again that will cause oxidation will cause an acidic soil so just over time so long story short what is the fix and the fix is lime lime is your fix now with container gardening and houseplants you do not want to use hydrated lime i'll put a link down below for what lime you do want to use but it's very very simple you're going to take one cup of lime and you're going to throw it into one of the just regular potting soil bags of potting soil so just like your regular ones you buy for your houseplants not the giant ones but just like the regular medium-sized ones if it is a smaller bag use a half cup it is is a giant bag use two cups but lime is the key the other option is wood ash and we've talked about this in other videos you do want to be kind of careful with this while there is lime in wood ash it is very difficult to calculate how much lime is in said wood ash because it's com going to completely determine on what kind of trees you burnt and and how long they burnt for etc and so forth so the general rule is two cups but i would probably reduce that to one i find this stuff to be very very toxic so just something to keep in mind but it is it is available and you can use it for like an or really organic i mean lime is organic too it's literally big rock pulverized into little rock but um, yeah, ultimately that, that would work as well. So the lime, what exactly does it do? It replaces the hydrogen item ions within the soil system, ultimately increasing our soil pH. It's very, very simple, basic chemistry that is taking place. But because it is lime, it is solving two problems at once. So it is raising our pH, but it is also replacing that calcium, magnesium, the molecules we we're talking about before that were removed through water leaching 
Uh, sodium, within reason, it's not going to do a bunch of damage, but it is replacing those ions that had been removed through the decreased pH and placing them back into the soil suspension. The nicest part about lime is it is really inexpensive, so that is a huge benefit. And the two types you're going to go for is the dolomite lime or cal calcite limestone. So those are the two different types that you can get. Um, either one is going to work. The dolomite is higher in magnesium, so something to keep in mind if you are, you know, lacking in magnesium, then that's something that you may want to consider. But ultimately, lime is going to be your solution for your potting soil. So if you are reviving the uh, potting soil in the spring for container gardening, you know, throw in a couple cups of lime. If you are repotting uh, plants up and you're using fresh soil, couple uh, cups of lime, obviously based on the volume you're dealing with. Or if you have house plants and everyone's potted up and happy and you want to add lime, just do a little sprinkle around the top water. It'll force it down. And then every time you go to water, you know, sprinkle a little bit more on top. Don't, uh, don't layer the top of the soil. While it may be tempting, you'll end up with mold and fungus. It, it tends to not uh, sit very nicely uh, on top of the soil. It floats, it makes a mess. So avoid that when possible. But ultimately, this is what you need, especially if you're having nutrient issues. If you have old potting soil or if you're using a soilless potting soil that is in the form of coconut coir or peat moss. So something you definitely want to add. If you guys have not heard this tip before, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and also share it with your friends that didn't know to add lime to their potting soil. Trust me, you'll see pretty wicked results, such as like unique color pops in your indoor plants and just overall better growth because pH is a serious factor when it comes to nutrient uptake. So just something cool to look at. You guys are really enjoying, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, really enjoying a uh, houseplant container garden type content when it comes to soil. I feel like it's because we're all switching our mindset from uh, raised bed, in bed gardening to like house plants indoor gardening. So ultimately I want you guys to thrive and uh, do very, very well. Show up all the competition on the block and this is the best way to do it. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.